Sometimes you need to set the proper mood for creativity. And sometimes you have mood swings, which is what I have on that day <laughs> or had. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of neutral colors lately, and it's still something that um, I identified with the most. However, on that day, I guess I was starting to get fed up with the snow that's been falling on us in the month of February more than the rest of the winter. And so bright and bold was something that I needed. And I wanted to do something completely abstract, very loose. And usually when I want to remain as loose as possible while I paint is that I will reach for flat brushes because it uh, it forces me to um, be less rigid. It forces me to not uh, close up a shape or form either a leaf or a circle or something a little bit more precise. A uh, flat brush, you can use it on its side, you can use it on the flat. Um, on the flat. <laughs> Let's keep it that way. <laughs> on the flat. Or you can use the tip of it. There are many ways to use it and I always find that this helps me remain loose. I did not want to do anything specific. I just started by blocking in some colors and eventually it became a tree with flowers in it. I call this rainbow tree <laughs> because I've never seen a tree like this in nature. I think we need it though, um, <laughs> especially these days. I would love to see a tree like this in my backyard. But uh, there's nothing really um, technical about this painting. I just decided to drop in some colors. I started with yellows and then moved into orange, uh, bright pink, um, some red violet, and then I'll add some more colors um, as I paint along. The one thing I want to say, however, is that I had quite a lot of um, questions about which colors to use next. And I know this will resonate with some of you. Um, it's due to two factors. A, of course, my love for neutrals now um, does not allow me to venture in colorful stuff per se. And B, I did not really study color theory uh, as much as I should. And this is something I want to correct in the future uh, because I think at some point in time, if you haven't started with that basic knowledge, um, it is worth exploring just because it makes your life a lot easier. And as I started adding the green, I guess that would represent the leaves. I started questioning my color choices and I think I will correct it properly in the end. <laughs> but at this point, I was like, mm. Maybe that wasn't the right choice.
I've noticed that I tend to hold my brush a little bit higher up on the handle when I when I do loose painting. I don't know if it's a thing. I don't know if it's a prerequisite. I just did it instinctively, but it certainly helps me. So maybe uh, it's a little tip for you to notice. I want to say that adding these details <laughs> is almost as satisfying as doodling for me. Uh, although the method is different, uh, these lines are quite broken. They're almost like abrupt and doodling for me is more flowy. But I guess it's in the details that I find the most joy. It really resonates with me and sometimes I have to stop myself <laughs> to not go overboard. But then again, you know, does it really matter? This is all just for the sake of practicing and you know letting the creativity flow and who cares if it just if you go overboard if you go too far is there such a thing really no nah, no not really i don't think so the color i'm using to do the branches is sepia it's the neutral that i needed to break up all these bold and brights just to provide contrast at the same time it looks like it's black but it's not it's a very dark brown i'm using the uh, gold class mission set by magello and it seems that's the set that i reach for the most when i want to do colorful stuff probably because uh, in the set there are a lot of bright colors maybe but it's a it's a wonderful set I've had a comment as I'm editing this. Someone was asking, what is your favorite brand of watercolor paints? And honestly, I don't have a favorite. I use many, many brands. <laughs> and my criteria for selecting one color or one brand over another is very basic. It has to do with the color that I'm looking for. It also has to do with the price and some brands have unique colors to them and also i tend to like very pigmented colors so obviously i will buy artist grade uh, also for light fastness reasons and in case this painting goes to somebody else i would hate for my painting to fade away in a few years <laughs> but uh yeah that i i really don't have a favorite um However, I noticed that the, the companies that use honey in their composition seems to uh, be favorites, not favorites of mine, but I appreciate that because they re-wet so easily. There's not really anything else to say about this painting. This could have turned into a completely abstract painting. Just splotches, splotches, <laughs> just colors dropped on a paper and that's it. And you, I could have walked away very happy. So don't limit yourself to something that has to be realistic. Sometimes just dropping in some color all over a page can be so much fun and this is still considered a good practice because you have done something. So if you're stuck uh, and you don't know what to paint, get your bright colors out. Even if you have just the primary colors, you can achieve these colors. You can, you can have a, uh, if you have in your arsenal a, a bright yellow, a bright red, and a bright blue you can do these colors easily by mixing them together so all right i've said enough about this painting i hope this is going to give you that push that you need today if you're stuck just um drop some paint on a page and just walk away happy that you've done something that is it <laughs> Thank you so much for hearing my tangents. Thank you, my awesome patrons, for supporting my art over at Patreon, which, by the way, you can all go and visit. I will put the link in the description. This is where I have a lot more videos, and they're exclusive to my patrons. 
So thank you so much for watching. Stay creative and I will see you soon.